need to know about like why bees or you know why we should all know. So even if we don't wind up having a beekeeping, you know it's always important to know what to do with honeybees when they sting because they're just out in nature. There's you know these feral kind of wild hives that are out there, and so everyone will see bees. Probably almost every one of us here has been stung either as a child or know someone who's been stung because they're out on the grass and people will accidentally step on them while they're playing. So it's very common, so it's good to know. They're all over the place. People will just get stung um, either at home, which is the most common place for someone to be stung, just because you're most likely to be barefoot there, and then also when you're in the park or at school. Um, and I think one thing that's really good when we come to thinking about education about stings is that stings could be scary, and the thought of being stung is scary. But the one thing to be um, just aware of is more that we understand why it's happening and what we can do to expect after a bee sting, I think that knowledge helps kind of alleviate some of that fear. Okay? And then it also can help you kind of, you know, if you're, if you're not sure what's happening um, and you're a little bit nervous and you see someone else, that kind of nervousness gets spread and I've seen that a lot happen. So you need at least one calm person in the room, you know, and that makes a big difference. So I know about bee stings because I do work with bees and I do things that normal beekeeping people don't do. I do bee rescues, which means that I take bees out of places that you know they really shouldn't be. You know, like if they're in a wall of someone's house or you know they're in like a jacuzzi that someone wants to use or they you know gotten into a flower pot. Those kind of places, you know, they really aren't like supposed to be there. You know, they're utilizing as something that we want as humans to use. So. I go in and I extract those bees. So you can see, like, I can be surrounded by bees and in a situation like this, even though I'm, you know, surrounded by them, they're actually not stinging. I do still wear protective clothing and depending on the nature of the beehive and how big it is, I may be able to, like, take out, you know, maybe 20, 30,000 bees without getting stung the whole time. Um, a common way and the most common reason why people get stung is it's just accidental. The bees are either around their face and they swat at them that's a good way to get stung because if they act, if you accidentally hit their stinger, the bees have no control over the stinger. Once the stinger hits something, then it actually will start to, um, because there's little hooks on the stinger, it will embed in the skin and they can't stop that once that happens. So definitely swatting is one reason why. And then just getting s stepped on. So if they're like on a little clover flower and a kid runs around and they step on it with, with their bare foot, they're going to get stung. And even a dead bee can sting because the bee just the stinger will just activate on its own. Um, you can still get stung that way. And some misconceptions about why um, bees sting. Some people think that bees just like them or like the way they smell, and so they're coming towards them, and for some reason they get stung that way. So it's really, they won't do it unless they, they need to, okay? Um, also, the other thing is bees don't like me. Um, they're not actually trying to hurt you. You know, they're just trying to like, push you away from the hive. And another common idea is that swarms of bees, so the swarms where bees are moving in mass, that those are dangerous. So a swarm of bee is a swarm of bees is actually, uh, in a sense, like a group of bees that's in transit. So they have no hive to protect, and so they're actually very, it's a very unlikely situation that they're going to um, sting anyone. The reason why people do get stung by swarms of bees is mostly because they start swatting at them or they see a swarm that's sitting in a tree and they throw a rock at it or they're trying to do something to it and they don't really have any idea um, how to work with these. That's how people will you know, get into trouble. And so I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this, but I wanted to go over the stinger itself. So um, just so people understand, there's a little stinger here that's kind of in someone's hand and then you'll see a little string here, which is the intestine of the bee and that's commonly what happens when the bee stings. So the only uh, bees that have stingers are the females. Males do not have stingers, and they're called the drones. Um, a queen can actually sting more than once, which is uncommon for all the rest of the female bees that are in the hive. So a queen can sting, but the only reason she stings is to kill other queens that may be in the hive. So um, that's a very special circumstance. And then the workers and the guards are the ones that are going to be the bee stinging. And then the stinger is a modified over depositor. So when there's a, the organ that deposits the eggs, and that is modified and that becomes the stinger. And so then that's why the workers and birds have them, because they're females. And then it's attached to the intestinal tract. And so then that's why when the stinger goes into the skin, 
they actually will embed because they're small little hooks. And then there's a little sack of venom that gets squeezed, and that's how the venom gets into the, your skin. And then it does pull out the intestines. So that's another reason why bees will not sting unless they really need to. It's because they will be hurt and they'll die. So that's where the go is what happens to the bees. So people understand this isn't something they're doing, you know, unless it's really necessary. So the stinger will be pulled out, the intestines come with it, and then what happens is because the intestines have been pulled out, they become dehydrated, they will die, usually within an hour, and you'll see them kind of stumbling around. And then even if the intestine is attached or the bee is not attached, there's a little muscle that um, allows the little venom sac to pump. And so what will happen is that will be left behind and it can still pump all the stingers in place. So what will happen is when you see a sting, um, usually there will be a little spot, sometimes even a little pimple that you'll see in the area. And it's a little bit hard to see here, but there's a little raised area. Um, the sting has what's called AB toxin in it. It's a mixture of an acidic toxin that's similar to the other types of venoms that insects make. It also has histamine, and that's an important thing to understand is that a lot of times what you're seeing is really the response to the histamine. So the histamine that makes us sneeze, the histamine that makes us itch for um, having, you know, wheels, if you've ever had that when you're nervous. Um, and it also has some pheromones in it, and the pheromones are a way for the bee that is stinging to attract other bees to say, here's someone that we don't want here, and it helps to track. So you can't have one bee sting and another bee can come and you should just walk away. And we'll see you like that um, and you'll have definitely the most common thing is it's going to hurt. You're going to have pain. And that's going to be similar to like a paper cut. It's, you know, as soon as you get a paper, it, ah, it hurts, it's sudden, and it usually goes away fairly quickly as soon as you can get this thing around. Um, there'll be some redness, mostly because of the histamine that's in there, also some swelling, um, and then later on some itching. Some of the misconceptions that people have with this thing, and there's a little bit of redness or erythema around this kind of raised area here where this thing occurred. And the most common thing is people say, I'm allergic. And what's happening is an allergy is something very specific. It's a uh, immunoglobulin or um, it's called Ig, the types of antibodies that we make to certain types of proteins that we're exposed to. And so an allergic reaction is really mediated by antibodies. But what you see initially isn't an allergy most of the time. Most of it's the histamine reaction that we're seeing. And then another thing was I was stung by a bee. That's always the first thing a lot of people think about is like, oh, it was a bee sting. Most of the time it's actually not a bee sting that you're seeing. So most of the time people are being stung by wasps. And so even though this reaction will look very similar, it's most likely going to be a different type of insect than a honeybee. So, but there are reasons why we do want to be concerned about bee stings, okay? And this goes for any type of sting, because even though the bee sting is not the most common insect to sting, um, what you want to do is be aware, because other types of venomous insects like ants and spiders and wasps can also cause allergic reactions. So this goes for any type of sting that occurs is that if you see a concerning reaction, we'll talk about that, you do want to call 911, and if there is an EpiPen, then you do want to use that if you know that someone's allergic. So some of the things that are very concerning is when you see redness that's greater than a dinner plate size, so that's about 10 centimeters, and it's starting to spread rapidly. Those are the kind of reactions that you want to stop early on. Also, if you have difficulty breathing, of course, any type of, you know, anything that causes difficulty breathing, you should call 911. Um, some people will feel a tightening of the throat because the throat is swelling. This occurs most commonly um, if you have a sting that's in the mouth. You can't actually, if someone has their mouth open, a bee can accidentally fly in, and that's how the bee gets stung. So that can be an accident, but it does occur. Um, nausea and vomiting just shows more of the systemic or whole body reactions that are common with uh, severe reaction or allergy. And then if you have symptoms before you actually get stung, so there are some people who are beekeepers who've experienced this where they, even when they start getting close to a hive, they'll start to feel a little bit of these symptoms. And that's a severe allergy, and those people definitely need to be treated for their underlying um, bee allergy. And then chest pain. And the chest pain is interesting because it can be because of an allergy, 
But what they've tried to do in terms of looking at the history of people who've died from these things or other types of things is to try to discriminate who's actually died from an allergic reaction and who's died because of partly a panic and um, myocardial infarction or heart attack um, reaction. So people can have cardiac arrhythmias when they get nervous or when they become exposed to a, a venom that's not an allergic reaction. So that's something else uh, to be aware of. And so one of the misconceptions is that everyone who has an allergy is going to die. You know, a death occurring because of an anaphylactic, a true sy systemic type of reaction is fairly uncommon, luckily. Um, but it does occur. So if we talk about stings within a year in the nation, approximately 30 um, stings from insects lead to death. 